Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are looking at the new Byzantium. The new and improved Byzantium and how to play the first 5 years or so against Ottomans because that's how long it takes to now completely break Ottomans. It's basically the big strong Byzantium versus the poor Ottomans in the current patch. This strategy you are about to see does not rely on RNG, does not rely on allies and doesn't rely on dice rolls. You will win with this strat 100% of the time. There are only two minor exceptions, one are the siege rolls themselves which unless your rolls and Ottoman siege rolls are really absolutely terrible you will still win and the second little exception is a bug in the current patch where the ally armies kind of bug out if you have seen it sometimes they would just stand on the province and won't move at all i had that in one of the byzantium playthroughs but even that can be overcome easily and with all that said let's get into this step-by-step -step guide First, set the focus on military as we want to get that mil tech as soon as possible. Don't worry about rivals for now. Decrease army maintenance to zero. Make the ruler and heir into generals. For estates, we are going to select primacy of the nobles for plus one mil points. This one is worth every time and so is supremacy over the crown. The estate agendas can give some really nice bonuses. With burghers, we are going to take the patronage of the arts as that initial prestige bump is nice. With clergy, we are going to take the clerical ministers which gives plus 0.5 early patriarch authority. This one doesn't cost any crown line control so it's a good one to take early on as well. And we are also going to take the expansionist zealotry, which gives plus 5% morale of armies when fighting heretics and heathens, which works great for Byzantium because we will be fighting only heretics and heathens for a while. Then we will summon the diet and take whichever mission we can complete. We are also going to improve relations with Albania and the knights. Now get the 8k army to Athens and start recruiting two more infantry. Then we are going to take a few loans. Just get over about 250 ducats in your account using loans and then we will recruit our Merc army. We will definitely take the free company as it's the cheapest. After that, look for armies with good generals. We need one with the most siege pips. You can get some pretty good generals here. And take another general which has decent shock and fire pips. Hire those two companies, then hire three more companies that are the cheapest. So in total, we will have five more companies. So we will be bleeding money for a bit, but that's okay. We are going to be all right. Now increase army maintenance to full then collect all the armies in Athens, except the two infantry regiments that we hired in Corinth. Now select the stacks in Athens and make sure all Merc armies are attached to our main army. Also allow friendly units to attach to the main army. Bring all ships to Corinth and we will wait till armies have recovered their morale. Now we wait for the Munstick to declare the war. On the first, declare on Ottomans with Selenic as the war goal. Ottomans will be allied to someone, it could be AQ or Crimea or Ramazan, it's fine whoever they are allied to. We don't need allies in this war ourselves. The earlier strats relied on Albania because of Skanderbeg, the 333 general. But now with Mercs we can get similar or even better generals, so we don't really need Albania against the Ottomans. Once we declare war, we will take the big army stack and send them to Selenik. Ottoman's army will move away from there and give the two stack army a general, whichever of our ruler and heir is better, and send them to Constantinople via boats. As soon as the two stack army lands in Constantinople, scorch earth there to slow down the Ottoman army, then march over to Kocelli with the boats in the Sea of Marmara. We will get both Selenik and Kocelli in one take. That's because Ottomans mothball their forts at the start and that's why it's important to not keep any army in Constantinople or else they will not mothball the Kocelli fort. So now with this two stack, siege down whatever you can. This is a sacrificial stack, if they die it's fine or you can try to bring them back if possible. 
With our main 20k stack, siege down their capital, and here's when the RNG comes in. I tried this strategy a lot of times, and I was able to siege down the level 1 fort before they could siege down the level 3 fort. So you should win this siege race every time. I would advise here not to engage the Ottomans army, it's just not worth it, because if dice rolls go against us, we could lose that battle. And don't try to siege down Gallipoli because it's hills and Ottomans will engage you there. So just carpet siege a bit if you can, peace out before Constantinople falls. We don't want a lot from this war really. All we need is Selenik and the province next to it, and all their money so we can pay our loans. Now get the 20k stack to the province next to Selenik, bring back the 2k stack to Constantinople, and get the boats into port. At this point, you should be able to ally both Albania and the Knights, and also start improving relations with Austria as we want them to be our long-term ally. Now we can also set our rivals. The Ottomans will now slowly move their army to Anatolia, wait till that happens. And now we will send our ships back to the sea and it's time to truce break Ottomans. This time we will declare for Gelibolu. The forts will be mothballed and we can call our new allies now with promise of land. Of course, we aren't going to actually give them anything. Buy down the war exhaustion and stab up whenever you can. In this war, I have seen Ottomans rarely try to engage, so you can wait for a bit, start deleting most of the Merc regiments. I would only keep two regiments at this point, the ones with the best generals. Just siege down Galdibolu, then Ederne and Carpet siege all of Balkans. And now comes the second RNG element. You can try to get the vassals and Albanian armies together and march on to Anatolia, you can beat up Ottoman's army, but it's really up to you. You can just take your course back in this war and war reps and be content and go again when truce expires. Or you can push through and take a province in Anatolia for easier future wars. And that's really it. The Ottomans are broken for good. They will try to expand a bit into Turkish Bay Lakes, or they might even get attacked by Mamluks here. In the meantime, you can recover the manpower and economy a bit, mothball all forts, decrease army maintenance, state everything, and wait till the truce is over. You should also release Bulgaria as they have a lot of course on Ottomans and will make the next war easier. This strategy really is foolproof. I have tried it a few times and it has worked every single time. Now the older strategies with allying Albania and calling them into the war still works, but I think this strategy has a better chance to succeed for every player, no matter if you are a beginner or an experienced player. And I know Byzantium is always interesting to play, so I hope this short guide can help you all take down the Ottomans as Byzantium. Let me know in comments how your run goes with the strategy. I will leave full playthrough at the end of this video if you all want to see me play using this strategy. You were watching your radio's guide, thank you for your time and I'll see you all in the next one.